So after studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the concept of affective behavior, learn about the structures of the brain involved in the control of affective behavior, and learn about the pathways of significant emotions of fear, anger, aggression, and happiness in the brain. This module introduces you to the neural mechanisms of affective behavior. Specific reference has been made to the three important emotions, that is fear, anger, and aggression and happiness. Affect or emotion is related to more primitive parts of the nervous system and serves some very important functions. Emotions are basically related to the survival needs and they have been useful throughout the history of evolution of the organism. For example, fear promotes avoidance behavior or fighting behavior, thus keeping the organism away from the potentially harmful stimuli in the environment. Similarly, anger and aggression mobilize the organism to dominate territory. They are also implicated in maternal behavior in animals. Finally, happiness is the result of reward systems in the brain that results in seeking behaviors that are beneficial to the organism. Let us now understand what do we mean by the term emotions. The word emotion comes from a Latin word mover which means to move. Emotions have some general properties such as they consist of intense feelings, they have a physiological or biological basis, they affect perception, thinking and behavior, they have motivational properties and the expression of emotion takes place in language, facial expressions and gestures. The most characteristic features that is common to all emotions is arousal which is created primarily by the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system is part of the autonomic nervous system which in turn is a part of the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is part of the nervous system that lies outside the skull and the spinal cord and connects the brain to the glands and the muscles. Although the sympathetic nervous system activation seems to produce identical behavioral components for various emotions, some researchers have found that there are subtle differences in the sympathetic nervous system activation for at least two of the emotions that is anger and fear. While in fear, the skin temperature of the organism reduces, in anger, both skin temperature and blood pressure shoots up. The right and the left hemisphere of the brain are differently involved in expression, recognition and comprehension of emotions. Research indicates that left hemisphere shows more activation for negative feelings and emotions such as sadness, depression, anxiety, etc. whereas the right hemisphere is more dominant in positive emotions. The latter is also more efficient in recognition of emotions through facial expressions. Let us understand the limbic system. In general, the emotions are said to be controlled by the limbic system, which is subcortical region of the brain that is very primitive and present in all mammals. Specific emotions have specific pathways in the brain and the information related to emotions is often spread into areas other than the limbic system. However, the relative activation is more in the limbic system during an encounter with an emotion provoking stimulus than other areas of the brain. Limbic system refers to a group of nuclei situated in the teleencephalon and the diencephalon region of the brain. These nuclei are functionally and anatomically interconnected to one another in the form of a ring or a border around the lower portion of the forebrain. It is a part of the brain that is similar to all mammals. It is ancient in evolutionary history of the brain as well as ontogeny of the human baby development in the womb. The picture shows the pathways interconnecting elements of the limbic system. Let us now understand the emotion of fear. Fear is perhaps the most primal and the enduring of all emotions. It is found in almost all animals. It has evolutionary advantage of promoting survival in the species. Amygdala is the brain structure which appears to control the behavioral, autonomic and hormonal components of fear as an emotional response and facilitates fear conditioning. It makes an organism learn to stay away from the sources in the environment that have caused harm in the past or have potential of causing harm to the organism in the current situation. 
amygdala along with another brain structure called hippocampus that is involved in memory formation causes an organism to have almost instantaneous learning of avoidance from the things that have harmed the organism in the past. Also, fear systems in the brain have their own perceptual channels and their own dedicated circuitry for strong traumatic memories. Normally, the fear response goes from the lateral nucleus to the central nucleus of the amygdala and then reaches the other areas of the brain. An experiment provides clue to this separate storage of fearful memories. About 100 years ago, Swiss psychologist Edward Clapade, 2001, was treating a woman suffering from a debilitating form of anterograde amnesia, that is, inability to remember any new information. The patient was unable to remember any new information. She would forget who the doctor was within the minutes of meeting him. One day, Clepade decided to do an experiment with her and held a pin hidden in the palm of his hand while greeting the patient when he came to meet her. When he shook hands with her, the patient got pricked by this pin. Next day, when Clepade met again with the patient and extended his hand to greet the patient, Although she had no explicit memory of the pin prick during the handshake that she had the previous day, she still refused to shake hand without being able to give a good explanation for her refusal. Clepade suggested that although the patient had amnesia of explicit recall, she still had subconscious memory of the danger of shaking hand that was conditioned in her because of her amygdala. Joseph Ledox started researching on conditioning rats to learn to fear the sound of a tone when it was repeatedly followed by a shock. The rats, when they experienced shock a few times, learned to give an automatic fear response of freezing in their place at the sound of the tone that is followed by the shock. Ledox wanted to know as to how did that sound go through the brain and create the response. To understand this, Ledox carried out surgical lesion that is removing a part of the brain using surgery to understand how the animal behaved without that part. The earlier researches before Ledox had established that the auditory pathways in the brain, that is the various parts of the brain that are activated when an auditory stimulus like a tone is processed by the brain. To understand what was happening in the rat's brain, which is very similar to human brain except for smaller size, Ledox started from the highest level of auditory processing in the brain, that is the auditory cortex in the temporal lobe, where the information from the ears reached in the end. He found that even after surgical removal of the auditory cortex, the rat was still able to learn the fear tone that was followed by the shock. Next, Ledox removed auditory thalamus in another rat and found that the rat was not able to learn the fear conditioning like earlier when he had the auditory thalamus intact. Auditory thalamus is just a relay station, that is, it just sorts out and passes information to the relevant areas in the brain depending upon the type of information. Ledox thus hypothesized that the information from the thalamus was going to another brain area other than the cortex. He then used a dye method, that is, introducing a color substance to trace the pathway that activated region creates and found that the information about the shock and the tone conditioning traveled from the auditory thalamus to the amygdala. Thus, Ledox suggested that the information about the fear conditioning follows two separate pathways in the brain, diverging from the thalamus region of the brain onwards. The first path is to the cerebral cortex where the conscious and the rational processing of the information occurs. The second path is towards the amygdala where the unconscious and rather reflex that is flight, fight, freeze and autonomic nervous system activation processing occurs. Thus, fear stimulus gets a conscious response of I am feeling scared of the sight of dogs because a dog bit me once earlier to a more unconscious response that is little under the voluntary control where like Lepardi's patient in earlier example, one may continue to feel uneasy and avoid a handshake with the person who pricked the palm even when the brain was unable to remember any information about who that person was or how he pricked the palm during the previous meeting. Now let us understand the low road and the high road in the fear conditioning. 
The two parts of cortex and amygdala are dubbed as the high road and low road respectively. The amygdala receives direct information of a threat or harmful stimuli from the thalamus so that it starts automatically responding within a few thousands of a second, which may be crucial in saving life in a dangerous situation. The amygdala later also receives information via a high road that is from the cortex region. The high road encodes much more detailed and specific information and takes at least twice as long to respond as the amygdala. Amygdala is a primitive part of our brain that is believed to have evolved to respond to biologically significant stimuli from warning against painful or unpleasant effects of stimuli to indicate presence of food, water, salt, potential mates or rivals or infants in need of care. Thus, the nuclei in the amygdala are responsible for several emotional responses including responses to aversive stimuli called fear. The amygdaloidal complex is located within the temporal lobes. It comprises of various groups of nuclei, each of which performs a specific function. It has been subdivided into 12 regions, each containing further subdivisions. The three main regions with their function are as follows. The region of the amygdala is in the first column. Input for the region is in the second column and the output of the region is in the third column. For the medial nucleus, the input is sensory information from various regions and the output is medial basal forebrain and the hypothalamus. For the lateral nucleus, the input is sensory information from the primary sensory cortex, the thalamus and the hippocampal formation. The output is ventral striatum, dorsomedial nucleus, of thalamus, basal nuclei and accessory basal nuclei. For the central nucleus, the input is the lateral nucleus, basal nucleus and accessory basal nucleus and the output is hypothalamus, midbrain, pons, medulla and the other regions related to the various components of emotional expression. Now let us understand the central nucleus. The central nucleus of amygdala plays an important role in the expression of emotional responses provoked by aversive stimuli. When threatening stimuli are present, an increase in the activity of the central nucleus occurs along with the production of force protein, which is concurrent with greater activation of neurons. If the central nucleus of the animal is destroyed or the nuclei responsible for providing sensory input to the central nucleus are damaged, reduction in various emotional behaviors and even physiological responses is observed. For example, overt signs of fear may be absent to an aversive conditioned stimulus in such a situation. Further, if the central nucleus is stimulated by implanting electrodes or chemical method of injecting excitatory amino acids, the animal may show behavioral and physiological signs of fear and agitation. Prolonged stimulation results in physical illness that are induced with long-term stress such as gastric ulcers. The central nucleus plays an important role in the memory of stimuli that have in past been harmful or painful to the individual. This part gets activated when there is a negative encounter, a shock, an injury or other such harm from a stimulus. An example of a conditioned emotional response is when one experiences a negative outcome such as pain or harm with every pairing of the stimulus such as experiencing an electric shock from an appliance. In studies with patients who have had surgical removal of brain parts to treat seizure disorders, it was found that the stimulation of parts of the brain related to amygdala like hypothalamus induced autonomic responses that are often associated with fear and anxiety. However, it was a stimulation of amygdala that resulted in reported subjective feelings of fear. Amygdala gives instantaneous response to potentially harmful stimuli. Some scientists believe that the human brain may have evolved over the years to develop a readiness to fear certain things more than others, such as snakes and spiders that have been a threat to humans for thousands of years. 
Mego in 2001 gave an injection of a substance called cyclic AMP to the rats that had learned that a tone would follow a shock. This substance is known to result in stronger memory in the cortex. It was found that those rats who had stronger memory of the shock that followed the tone showed greater freezing response expecting a shock. However, a similar response was not observed after the amygdala of the rats was removed. In a research by Clover and Bussy in 1939, it was found that if the entire temporal lobe including the subcortical region of the amygdala is removed in some monkeys, they would show no fear around snakes or humans. This phenomenon of fearlessness due to damaged amygdala is known as clover Bussy syndrome. The following sites present interactive brain structures to understand the fear which is indicated in the diagram. Let us now understand the emotions of anger and aggression. Aggression refers to the behavior that can result in physical or psychological harm to oneself, other or objects in the environment. Species typical aggressive behavior includes the pattern of movements that are genetically determined including posturing, biting, striking, hissing etc. in animals. These are largely controlled by the neural circuits in the brain stem. The hypothalamus and periaqueductal gray matter of the brain areas control the expression of both behavioral and autonomic components of aggression. They are connected to both brain stem nuclei controlling autonomic functions and the amygdala and prefrontal cortex. Electrical stimulation of the hypothalamus causes aggressive behavior and the hypothalamus has receptors that help determine aggression levels based on serotonin and vasopressin levels. Defensive behavior often observed as part of the aggression and domination has been found to be elicited when part of the brain called periaqueductal gray matter or PAG of the brain midbrain is stimulated in the lab. Serotonergic synapses also important in fear in animals act as inhibitors in aggressive and risk taking behaviors. Let us now see what are the biological origins of aggression. Testrogen is involved in male aggression and both testrogen and estrogen in female aggression. Although the causal link for testrogen in humans is questionable. The amygdala and the hypothalamus appear to be the most important brain structures in aggression both in lower animals and in humans. The prefrontal cortex suppresses aggression and deficiency there is linked to violent behavior. Human aggression may be reactive or proactive. These two types appear to be biologically distinctive. Serotonin inhibits aggressive behavior and low serotonin levels is associated with aggression. Low serotonin and high testosterone levels may interact to increase aggression in humans. Heredity is estimated to contribute half of the variability in aggression among humans. Genetic links with aggressive behavior involves serotonin receptors and estrogen metabolism. The other half of the variation is due to environment including inadequate parenting. The diagram shows the neural circuitry in defensive behavior and predation. Thus a working definition of emotion may be given as follows. Emotion is an increase or decrease in physiological activity that is accompanied by feelings that are characteristic of the emotion and often accompanied by a characteristic behavior or facial expression. Let us now understand the emotion of happiness. Since 1960s, the emotional state of happiness has been related to the reward system in the brain. Part of the brain called nucleus accumbens is directly related to the emotion of happiness, laughter and euphoria in humans. The signal in the brain usually travels from the cerebral cortex that signals that a stimulus in the external environment is beneficial and thus the behavior of the self is a reward worthy. An area called ventral tegmental area or VTA receives signals from the cerebral cortex and releases dopamine into the nucleus accumbens, amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. Stimulation of the nucleus accumbens in humans elicits smiling, laughter, pleasurable feelings, happiness, even euphoria. During a reward response, the prefrontal cortex activates 
focusing the individual's attention so that the person learns to repeat the behavior, a conditioning to the rewards. Thus, happiness is a reward system that reinforces the behavior that is perceived as beneficial to the organism and helps in promoting survival. The area of the brain called ventral tegmental area is amongst the most primitive parts of the brain. It synthesizes the main neurotransmitter substance that is implicated in the reward circuitry pleasure centers of the brain. It is called dopamine. This structure of the brain is located at the top of the brain system in the midbrain. Orbital cortex has been suggested to be involved in the working memory about the rewards and punishments. Orbitofrontal activity has been shown to encode the subjective experience of pleasure. However, it is not clear whether orbitofrontal activity alone actually causes pleasant feelings. However, the entire brain mechanisms of subjective experience of happiness are still not completely clear. Amygdala and its connections to the prefrontal cortex and basal ganglia are likely to influence the selection and initiation of behaviors aimed at obtaining rewards and avoiding punishments. Through functional MRI or fMRI technology, Davidson and Fox demonstrated that the left side of the frontal lobe, known as the left prefrontal cortex is more active when people feel happy, whereas the right side of the frontal lobe, the right prefrontal cortex is more active when people feel sad. Thus the two hemispheres also play different roles in various emotions. The autonomic nervous system increases bodily arousal during an emotional event and decreases it afterwards. The limbic system is a network of several structures that have functions in emotions. The amygdala has a variety of functions, but its role in fear has received the most attention. The prefrontal cortex combines emotional input and with other information to make decisions. Damage to the right hemisphere particularly blunts emotions and impairs the person's ability to recognize emotion in faces and voices. People with damage in the prefrontal cortex have trouble in following moral and social rules, and they have impaired ability to learn about the consequences of their behavior. Let us now summarize what all we have learned. The word emotion comes from a Latin word mover means to move. The most characteristic feature that is common to all emotions is arousal, which is created primarily by the sympathetic nervous system. Emotions are controlled by the limbic system, which is a subcortical region of the brain. Fear systems in the brain have their own perceptual channels and their own dedicated circuitry for storing traumatic memories. Fear responses goes from the lateral nucleus to the central nucleus of the amygdala and then reaches other areas of the brain. The two parts of the cortex and the amygdala are dubbed as high road and low road respectively. The hypothalamus and periquiductal gray matter of the midbrain areas control the expression of both behavioral and the autonomic components of the aggression. Parts of the brain called nucleus accumbens is directly related to the emotion called happiness, laughter and euphoria in humans. The left prefrontal cortex is more active when people feel happy whereas the right prefrontal cortex is more happy when people feel sad.